please join me in welcoming Shakira Brown. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction, Tom. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Uh, we are going to cover some very important topics, really just to get you focused in on how to best communicate your agenda uh, for uh, anything with regard to trying to get a budget from the C-suite. So I want to go over some agenda items, wants and needs. <clears throat> That's sort of a sales tactic. All right. Effective conversations, influence and persuasion. More sales. Landing the budget you want. We're going to go over, of course, some key takeaways to make sure you didn't miss anything and you didn't fall asleep, which I will not let you do. And then uh, we'll do a Q&A if we have time. The fact that when people want something, decision makers especially, they often do not understand exactly what they need to get it. So what you have to do as cybersecurity advocates, IT security advocates, you have to bridge what you know they actually need with what they want. And that's going to help you get what you want, which is possibly a budget. Now, who in this room, by a show of hands, is responsible for going to ask for money for Okay, well, most of you. Okay, so this is all relevant information. So it's important that you always understand and bridge what you know they need versus what they want. When I get a call from someone, a business owner, looking to hire me to help them with branding or marketing, or whatever, they always call for something that they think they, they really need. But it's not. It's usually what they really want is to grow their business and get make more money. But I find that if I help them with one thing, they would still be lagging in another, they need to do something else with me. So wants and needs is something that we all have to kind of get in place, okay? Decision makers need to hear business value. I'm, I'm sure you've all heard this before, right? Basically, they care about how will it increase revenue? How is it gonna lower costs? How is it gonna improve productivity? Uh, basically, they only care about money. That's it, right? So whatever you do, you have to bridge your plans, your project plans, your agenda, to, uh, by justifying it as business value to the organization. Okay, and these are all basic things you've heard before, but I promise you, we're gonna go a little deeper into this. So elements of a conversation plan. When you walk into any room to have a conversation, meeting, whatever it is, have a purpose. Go in there with an idea, uh, with the end in mind, and think about exactly what it is you would like for, uh, to walk out the door with, okay? Have an outcome, okay? Think about, okay, so I wanna make sure that I get a meeting, or whatever it is, have that in mind. Make sure your audience is ready. I wanna tell you that if your C-suite uh, off officers are, are having conversations about lowering costs and not spending money, probably not a good time to talk about them spending an extra $5 million to upgrade your security, uh, or your IT security. So that might be something that you want to uh, hold for another time or consider, but your audience needs to be prepped and ready. I was like, just so you know, when I worked in corporate, uh, the IT people used to always call me a super user because I was always a little bit more knowledgeable than everybody else. So they couldn't give me the BS, you know, can't do this because they never could pass that on. But I did get a lot of respect for them from that and they did help me a lot. And it's easy to pass people off because they don't, they're clueless and don't get it. But it really is important to actually listen to what they're saying because maybe there's something you could do to improve how you're delivering whatever it is that you're delivering to. Persuasion has a lot to do with some sales strategies. You didn't know you were going to learn sales strategies when you came into this room, but you will. Because and really, for you to be able to really get your agendas across, your project plans, whatever it is you're working on, you need to be able to use effectively influence and persuasion. So communicating with confidence is all about, it's all encompassed in persuasion and influence. Confidence also requires that you have credibility with your audience. You may have noticed that I had a very nice introduction when you, uh, and that is I provided it, but it also adds to my credibility for you to know what I've done, right? So it's important that you make sure that folks know exactly what you're all about, what you do, what you're an expert at, and then that if people believe that you know what you're talking about, you're gonna more likely be successful in getting what you want. I believe that I'm an expert, right? So you have to, in order to build that credibility, you have to believe that you're an expert. Have it, has anybody ever thought of you? Do, you? do you think of yourself as an expert? Just shake your heads, yes or no. Not too many heads are shaking. This guy's very confident. I like this guy. Uh, quick story. 
There was a gentleman that came up to me uh, recently, and he was starting a, a photography business. And he said, okay, great, you're a marketing PR person, great. How can I convince people? How can I convince people to do business with me? I just started out, I'd left my employer, I'm on my own, and I asked him one simple question. I said to him, do you believe you're the best photographer? He paused and he was like, ugh. Yeah, well, I'm good, I want to say the best. I was like, okay, let me stop you right there. If you don't believe you're the best, nobody else will. So if you're not gonna go out there and say you're the best, people only want to work with the best. So you have to believe that you're an expert. So you have to be credible to yourself. Okay, does anybody have an internal blog that you do that relates to what you know? This, this guy's a champion. <laughs> it's a company we do. So do you contribute to it? We do, I do. That's awesome. This is, let me tell you something, how important this is. To be able to share personal and departmental achievements, maybe you guys uh, submit yourselves for awards or other recognitions, 40 under 40, uh, project, project awards, whatever it is. How are the decision makers gonna know you're a credible authority on IT if you don't tell them, right? One time when I worked in corporate, uh, there was a gentleman who didn't do a lot of work. And, uh, hey, you know that, you know that guy? Uh, he kind of hid, and uh, he worked from home all the time. No one ever knew what he was doing. Um, and I took over an organization that he was supposed to be nurturing. He wasn't doing anything with it. And I got the company involved. It was a very important state organization that, was, uh, that the company needed to be involved with. And a year after I got them kind of optimized into the organization, we get an email from the guy who does nothing. And he says, well, good news, we're getting the corporate award. Uh, from this organization. We're, we're being a, a, a honored as a, a, as a good citizen. And I was like, hmm, about a day later, I get a letter from that same organization. Guess whose name was in that letter? Mine, another VP's, and the guy who does nothing, but he didn't mention it. So what I did was I took that letter, photocopied it, got an inner office envelope, slipped into the envelope, put the CEO's name on it, no return who it was from, <laughs> knew the assistant would see it was a company award and would tell him, 24 hours later, CEO saying, great job, Shakira, and this person and that person. If I didn't do that, this guy would have taken all credit for it. So DIY PR, folks, you got to do it. I want to thank you for your time. There's no questions, right? Did anybody, I don't see, oh, whoa, I've got one question. One question. Okay. When you were speaking about uh, presenting the agenda, proactive versus reactive, it wasn't clear to me whether you were recommending pr presenting both simultaneously or being proactive but prepared for the reason. Yeah, what I was saying is you should definitely 100% present both. Okay. It, it, it seems sort of unconventional, but, you know, if they could see for themselves that the, 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 the blue pill is not better than the, is, is a horrific notion, and the red pill is better, if you can show them that, they're gonna, they can make a decision for themselves. You, you don't want to go in there and tell them what they need to do. Remember that quote from Dale Carnegie, they want to be driven, right? So you have to drive them down that path and show them. And if you do that, if you present, this is what we're, we're suggesting the proactive approach. But we could be reactive and this is what you would get for that. They need to see that and it needs to be focused in on all the very detailed, both sides of the equation need to be very detailed and they need to see that. Um, and, and as you guys know, the reactive, no one wants to be reactive. I mean, it's like, it's wor that's worst case, that's DEF CON 5, that's worst case scenario. Um, but if they're not thinking that, if they want to keep their, you know, if they don't want to keep their money in something else and they don't want to invest in what you think is better for the company, you have to show them that this is better for the company. And the only way you're going to do that is to give them the option to be proactive or reactive. I, I mean, it's very, not very often do people choose to be reactive and be put in a, in a defensive mode. Very few people choose that. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and having me here. And I hope that you'll go off and be amazing uh, conversational leaders and you get the money that you want for all of your budgets. Thank you. Yeah.